How do you change society? October 2014 Dear beautiful people, I greet you all. I am the voice of Earth. Receive me into your midst for I am your mother. Open the cells of your body to me so I can sustain you. I would like you to relax, so do that now. Let go of all tension, the many thoughts in your head, the repetitive worries that many people have. Let them blow away. Let air flow through and around you. You are so dear to me. I love you so much, and I welcome you. Trust me, which is something that has never been taught to you. In fact, you have been taught to distrust me. As a child, you learn very early to rely on the energy and the capabilities of your mind in order to organize life so it can be managed. A large part of the upbringing and education of children aims at making life manageable, as well as making people adapt to a social system that has already been firmly established. This kind of upbringing and education confuses children, because in them still lives a spontaneous, intuitive flow that is strongly connected to their emotions, which are often still very direct and raw, and this scares adults. In the course of your upbringing, you become wary of your emotions, of the power of them, the passion in them, of their boundlessness. But are emotions really without bounds? No, emotions have their own dynamic. If you let them take their course, in time they will find a natural balance by themselves. When you allow a child to let off some steam when it is angry, because it feels unfairly treated, for example, the child will, in time, naturally return to a state of silence, of reflection. It is sometimes necessary to help the child do that. But what often happened in the past, and what is still happening today, is that such an emotion is suppressed and prevented from being expressed. By doing this, from early on in the child's life, its natural emotional life becomes restricted. You are so pressured into becoming a controlled adult, who is not accustomed to trusting its spontaneous emotions, desires, zeal, or passion. In this way, you become alienated from your deepest motivations. They are pushed into a dark corner, as it were, where you do not dare to go. But, sooner or later, what has been hidden will want to come forth. The voice of your heart, your soul, will not be denied forever. It seems as if right now, in this day and age, that voice of the soul is simultaneously waking up in many people. There is, you might say, a kind of revolt taking place. People want to live, not just to survive, and not just to organize life, but to fully participate in it. There is a need for real experience, for depth, and this can give rise to intense fluctuations in your emotional life. You are in the process of a return to your center, to that essence that is both heavenly and earthly. You carry within yourself an immortal soul that is infinite, and that is not something that can be grasped intellectually. There is this light in you that is infinite, that is not bound by time or space, that is not tied to this body. Still, that infinite spark of light has chosen to enter into a dance with the body, and a dance with me, earth, and with nature. And why is this so? The soul descends into a body in order to experience something special, which it cannot experience in the heavenly realms. The light wants to take a form and to become embodied to experience life and creativity in material form and learn and grow from it. By taking a form, you become visible to others and appear to them as an individual being. There is then you and the other, and there is communication between living beings, interaction, the need for understanding, and the possibility of enjoyment. Because the soul manifests itself on earth. Creation is made possible with its amazing diversity that makes life really interesting and exciting, an adventure. The purpose of the meeting of heaven and earth, of the merging of soul and body, and the goal of humanity, is to create, and to experience the magic of this adventure. You might now ask how it is possible for human life on earth to have become an example of the control of life, of the manipulation of life, so that many people, and nature, too suffer from a repressive, judgmental energy. What has become of that original magic, that adventure you could feel ever so clearly as a child, and which belongs to the child? The suffering of humanity and of nature makes me sad. There is so much longing, pain, 
suppress emotion in people here, yet there is hope. There is change happening, and I speak to you who are reading this, because I know you are forerunners. You who feel there is change coming and that when this change is carried out by many individuals, something new can emerge on earth. I want to invite you to experience that feeling within yourself. Descend into your own being and go with your breath into your abdomen. Connect with the playful energy of the child within you. That child understands about magic and adventure. That child trusts in larger forces. That child does not need to master and oversee from the mind. And that child is still there within you, alive, and you cannot kill it. Imagine for a moment that you see this child, and greet it. Feel how this child of yours is connected with me. Feel how deep down the child knows it wants to be on earth, and wants to be a human bridge between heaven and earth. Rediscover the magic and bring it back into your life. What can you do in your daily life in order to create a sense of magic and adventure? Ask the child within you what it needs to come to life. It can be something very simple, so do not make it into a big thing, keep it playful and small. Your mind often thinks that great things have to happen to change the consciousness of humanity on earth. But I tell you, return to what is simple, the magic of the child within you, that is the answer. Therein lies your connection with greater powers, heavenly and earthly. That is where you give to yourself something greater than yourself. Unfortunately, you have become discouraged in your faith in that possibility, but it can be so very tangible in your life. Many of you are struggling to be present on earth, and especially in the social reality. But the way that reality is currently set up and structured, and how it is determined by laws and rules, expectations and requirements, often restricts you and stifles your creativity. That reality is the opposite of magic and adventurousness, and it often oppresses you. Some of you feel so alienated from society that you doubt whether you belong here on earth at all, and it is precisely to those people that I want to say, you belong at home here, on me and with me. I am the soul of earth, and you love me. Make the distinction between the social reality, with its human concepts and rules, and the energy of nature in its wild state, the energy of forests, seas, birds, flowers. That is the original energy of the earth, and that is where your home is. You understand that energy, and appreciate it. I feel that you value me, and I honor you because of that. Do not fight with society, because as soon as you enter into a battle, you want to act, structure, organize and you often want to force something to change. But much of what now prevails in society by way of control and old judgments and coercion can only collapse through a crisis. Sometimes, something needs to die completely before real change can take place. You can help to support the consciousness change on earth in your own daily life by returning to your source, the child within you, your originality. Dare to experience your emotions, and work together with them. Dare to dream again, and dare to be passionate, to believe in the possibilities that life offers, even if society tells you that it is not possible and not feasible. So much is possible when people live from their hearts, when they dare to trust their feelings, unconditionally. This is not to say that you act on each impulse that presents itself. What it means is that you are sensitive to what affects you and what touches you. That you go inward and not only look at the child within you when it is angry, anxious, or sad, but also when it is enthusiastic and passionate. That you work with this child and really dare to live according to your deepest ideals and motivations. Doing that will eventually change society, and not through a fight against something, but through a return to your own truth, your original being. Finally, I ask that you descend with your awareness into your feet and feel how they touch the ground. Imagine that you breathe through your feet. Every time you breathe in, you take earth energy into your feet. Feel how your feet become heavy and how they carry you. Feel how you are born by me, the earth. You do not have to do it all by yourself. There are larger forces that want to assist you, that want to support you on your soul's path. Feel those powers for a moment, and feel my strength to bear you.
then feel the heavenly powers that are also here in the form of guides, angels, and your soul, although you do not have to know exactly how and what is here. It is about experiencing a greater force that is gentle and joyful. One that is not critical of you, and one that has sympathy and compassion for how you feel. Feel that power for a moment, which comes from behind you into your heart and chest and shoulders. Allow this support and comfort and encouragement into your life. Feel how your mind becomes quieter when you attune to these sustaining and nurturing energies. Trust the signals, the signs that you continually receive from your body and your senses. There is a magical power in life that can guide you, one that is focused on joy and the power of creation. It is this magical power which will transform life on earth. Channeled by Pamela Kribbe. Translation by Maria Bays and Frank Tayan. www.yeshua.net